Hi, cartographers. I'm Dr. Jason Van Horn, professor of geography at Calvin University. In today's video, we will take a look at the fundamentals of joins. In this video, we'll first start with the concept of a join, and then we're going to download some data together. We'll go out there and get this data, and we'll deal with the messiness of preparing data to make a join successful. And then, of course, we'll join that data together in our GIS software. So let's first begin with the concept of a join. A join is really built on the idea that you have two things. You have a geography and you have attributes of the geography and you want to join them together. Take, for example, trees. All of the trees that are around you right now, wherever you are. Let's say that those trees are a point layer. And that point layer then has a geography. We can locate all of those trees. But what's true of every geography is that it also has attributes. And so we could say that the trees have a certain height or they're a certain type. Or perhaps the trees um, have a certain diameter uh, of their trunk. Those are attributes of the trees. Well, if we have a geography layer and an attribute layer, we want to combine them together. And so the only way that we can do that is if each one of those layers shares a common field, the same field in each one of those layers. By combining the common field data, we can actually make a join. So that's the general concept of a join in GIS. So now let's take a look at data and let's go get some data from the United States Census Bureau. Download it and deal with the messiness that comes with that before we actually do a join. Okay, here we are at census.gov. Let's go ahead and get our two files, our geography file and our attribute file and let's see if we can join them together. All right, first to get our geography file, I'm going to choose browse by topic. It looks like I'm a little in the way here. Choose geography. Okay, scroll here. Okay, so we have tiger line shape file, cartographic boundary file, and tiger line geodatabases. Okay, we're gonna choose the geodatabases file for this example. We have all the enumerated units of the census in this file. We have our counties, we have our, our census tracts, our block groups, and our blocks. And we are going to choose uh, the year 2020. And uh, then I will choose the state of Michigan. So here we'll select Michigan. Since I'm in the state of Michigan right now at Calvin University. Okay, so we'll download this uh, to my working folder, working Michigan folder. So as that is saving, let's go ahead and get our attribute data uh, as well. So here, if I choose data.census.gov, uh, this is the location uh, of all the attribute table data uh, because these files do not include demographic data. They're just geography files. So the Census Bureau has thousands and thousands and thousands of data tables attribute uh, data, uh, but it doesn't have a geography. So you have to do a join. So let's go find that data. I'm going to data.census.gov and here I will choose, instead of just making a search, I'll choose advanced search and that will allow us to filter out and down to what we really want. Okay, in this case, let's choose and start with our geography. Let's search block groups. And let's find the state of Michigan. There we go. I'm a little in the way. Sorry about that. And let's go to Kent County, where I'm at. Kent County, Michigan. All right. There's Kent County. I'll select Kent County. And now I want all block groups within Kent County, Michigan. So I'll choose that one. And now I want year 2020. And let's add one more filter. Let's do topics. All right, let's choose population and people and counts and estimates and projections. And let's choose population total and do a search. I'll just click search here. And now we have all of our data that's under those particular filters. In this case, let's just choose P1 race from the decennial 2020 census. When I click on that, 
you can see I get an example of, of what's in that data file. You know, all these different block groups and all this different kind of uh, data. I've got some options up here. I could even download as Excel, a CSV, a zip file. But what's most important is that we have that common field. The common field that the Census Bureau uses is called GeoID. You should have a GeoID in your geography file and a GeoID in your attribute file. And so then we can join them together based on that common field. They should match. And if they do, we'll have a great perfect join. If they don't match, we have to pre-process and deal with some of that. So in order to get that common field, I encourage my students to choose this option, download table data here at the top of the column from all the results, and then select what you want by checkboxing and choose download. Then you'll get this particular kind of download pop-up box. And when we click on download CSV, if your pop-up blocker is on your browser, it'll be blocked. Otherwise, uh, you'll get the, the data. Okay, so I clicked it and there's the data. I'm using this particular working folder, as I said before. And now we have our demographic data, our attribute data. So we have both our geography data and we have our attribute table data. So now let's unzip both of those and take a look at them. I will show in folder and we'll start with our geography file. It's just a geo database. We'll extract that. All right. And now we will deal with our demographic data and I will select this and all of these and unzip all of those. Okay. Now this is a CSV file. So let's go ahead and take a look at that in Excel. I'm going to choose the data with overlays and take a look at it. Okay, now what I see here uh, is that we have on row two, uh, actually we have no data. So that could be a problem when you're doing analysis, but with our join, it shouldn't matter. And then we have our data starting on row three. Now here we have what looks to be some variation of the FIPS code, the Federal Information Processing Standard Code, where all geographies in the United States can be coded based on a series of numbers. In this case, the state of Michigan is number 26 and Kent County is 081. And so if you want to identify any data associated with Kent County, Michigan in the FIPS standard code, it should be 26081. And then it looks like we have a bunch of other preceding uh, numbers here, 1500050 is a US, and then the 26081. Okay, so this is our attribute table data with our CSV. Now let me go ahead and uh, open up Arc uh, Map or Arc Pro uh, and show you then uh, what it looks like for our block groups, for our geography. So give me a second, I'll just make a transition. Okay, here we are in ArcMap. Let me go ahead and show you that data file for its geography. All right, here's our block groups. Let's go ahead and add those. Here are all the block groups uh, in the state of Michigan. Let's open up the attribute table. Uh, and here is GeoID. Notice we have no demographic data here, but we do have our GeoID. Uh, so does this field look the same as this field? Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't. So we have to do a little bit of manipulation of the data here, right? Because if we were to do a join on GeoID here with this GeoID here, our join would fail because the, the data in those fields are not the same data. And so it looks like here we have to remove this one, the five, the five zeros, and the US. We can keep the 26081 because that is represented here. In this data here, we have a 26, we have our county, uh, and then we have our block group. It looks like there are 8,386 block groups in the state of Michigan. And so we're just interested in those in Kent County. So let's go ahead and do that. We could do that here in Excel. We could do a find and replace, but it is a CSV, which makes it a little more complicated uh, with this particular data. Uh, or we could uh, maybe um, do some sort of uh, formula, uh, which is also possible. The Census Bureau does provide uh, a way to do that uh, with the, the formula here. Uh, or we could do it in Arc Map or in Arc Pro or our GIS software. So let me show you how to do that in our GIS software 
uh, so that you can uh, get a little more feel for how you actually can, can do this. So the first thing that we'll do is we will save this as an Excel spreadsheet. So I will choose to save as, uh, and we'll call it the same thing, but we'll save it as an Excel spreadsheet, a workbook. All right, choose save, and there we go. Now let's pop into our GIS software and do some processing. Okay, here we are in ArcMap. Now let's go ahead and bring in that Excel spreadsheet. We have to first do that by creating a GIS friendly file from it. So we have to convert it and that's easy to do. We choose Arc Toolbox, Conversion Tools, Excel, and Excel to Table. This brings in Excel spreadsheets and makes them GIS friendly tables. So here we'll navigate to our Excel spreadsheet we saved. I'll choose open and now notice it wants to write to a geodatabase. Every time we convert a, an Excel spreadsheet into a GIS friendly table, it needs to go inside of a geodatabase. So we could put it in my default one or we could just put it inside this one right here. So the block group is inside of a geodatabase from the Michigan one that we downloaded from the Census Bureau. Let's choose that one. All right, so here we are. It looks like inside that geodatabase. And I will call this census 2020 underscore race underscore P1. Save. And now we're choosing the sheet. There was only one sheet. And I will hit OK to convert this Excel spreadsheet into a GIS friendly table. Now, once that's completed, we can actually pre process our data and then do our join. Looks like it's ready. So now I will right click and choose to open that attribute table. I'll open up the attribute table for the block group and look at the common field. OK, so there's the geo ID from the block group. Here's the geo ID from our demographic data. So we need to remove then this first starter information, right? It's easy to do. Anytime we wanna edit a table, we just need to, to start the editor. So I'm going to right click up here and choose uh, to you know, turn on my editor, just a quick toolbars option. And now I will start editing. Under editor, I will choose to start editing. And now notice the top of the header columns of the file that I'm working with, they turned lighter color. It's a visual cue that ArcGIS has to let you know that you're editing a table. Both of these are in the same geo database, so we had no other prompts come up. It just starts editing. And now with this table uh, column selected, I will choose from the upper left, the table options, the drop down, find and replace. And now I will choose replace. And in this case, I'll type in one, five, the five zeros and US. And now when I choose to replace all, all of that data goes away. It's replaced with nothing. And now we have the 26081 and then the block groups. I will close that. I will stop my editing and save my edits. And now this geo ID field looks exactly like the one for the geography geo ID field. All right. So now when we do our join, we are joining on that common field and the data is the same. So we should be successful in our join. Let's try it out. So here I'm going to make sure that I don't have anything selected. So clear selections, nothing there. I want to make sure I don't have anything selected. So let's just take a look here in this fourth tab at the top of the table of contents and it looks like nothing is selected. So we are good to go and ready to do our join. So here I'm on the display view. I'm going to left click on the block group and choose join and relates and join. We're always going to join our attribute to our geography. Okay, always going from our attribute demographic data to our geography. So we always start with the geography. That's what we're starting with, the geography. And so here we have three options. We can first choose the field and the layer that you want to join the base on, uh, jo uh, base the join on. And so here we'll choose geo ID. And now we have our table data. 
And of course, we're choosing among our table data columns, the GOID, those are the common fields. Now, if we keep all records, all of the state of Michigan block groups will still be present when we do our join, but the only ones that will have data are those related to Kent County, Michigan, 081. Or we could just keep all matching records and then only those places that match will be viewed on the data viewer. And so then if we choose this option, only the block groups in Kent County will be visible. Let's choose that option. When I click OK, now it looks like we have a successful join. All right, let's zoom in there to Kent County, Michigan. All right. And so here we have successfully done our join. Let's right click and choose open the attribute table. And sure enough, there it is. There uh, the start of our geography. And then we have our demographic data now successfully joined to our geography. So we are successful in doing our join. So if you found this video to be helpful, uh, please go ahead and like it and subscribe to this channel for more GIS content. And if you'd like, come alongside me in the classroom, earn your GIS certificate or your master's in geographic information science from Calvin University. So happy GISing until the next time and thanks.